This is it. This is where it all started. This is where flying wheels began. And I think I might move back here. I might close up my shop and move back to what you see behind me and I'm really not sure and that's what I made this video for. I want your advice. I'm gonna give you all the options. I'm gonna lay all the cards on the table and I wanna know what you would do for real. How would you handle this situation? Today's video, do I move into this shop or do I keep what I have and there's a lot of variables. Let's get going. <laughs> So hey everyone, my name is Craig from Flying Wheels. Welcome to my Flying Wheels YouTube channel. I own a small car dealership in a small town in New Hampshire. And we do really, really well actually. We ship nationwide and we do a lot of cars every single month. We sell both retail and wholesale, meaning we sell to the public and we sell to other dealers. Other dealers are a lot easier because it's dealer to dealer. There's no handshakes, there's no signatures, there's no phone calls, there's nothing. It's just, they buy a car, they write a check, I get paid, it's gone. No financing, no back-end products. There's a lot less money to be made, but it's a lot easier and you can do more in volume. Well, when I started in New Hampshire 11 years ago, I started in this unit right here. Actually, one of these units right here. Tiny 1,200 square foot unit. As the business grew, I moved out, I bought a building, I bought a garage, and we started doing better and better but I kept this unit because it's always paid for itself. Well, as business grew, this unit, this entire building came available for sale and I bought it about three years ago. So I own the entire building, eight units. They're all rental properties. They're all rental income. This is my retirement. So right now the building pays for itself and then in 20 years, the building's gonna be owned and then all the rental income is mine for retirement or I can sell the building and collect all the money and pay a crazy amount of capital gains tax. Well, anyway, that's neither here nor there. The purpose of this video is because my double unit just came available and it's the best unit in the entire building and I'm really, really thinking about closing my shop and moving into this unit. So let me give you a tour. So these guys used to do old Land Rover and Porsche restorations and it's just a nice, big, wide open office, good for customers, nice for multiple people. Right now my office is in a, basically a hallway that's too tight for two people to be in. The office is tiny. It's old, it smells like a garage, it's dark. It's just not appealing to when a customer shows up. So when they show up, it's just not like, I don't know. I, I'm just not proud of this office. Even though it has like my personalized stuff, there's a lot going on in a little place. My office doesn't fit two chairs, so it barely fits two people. This is a nice service desk. Not that we do a lot of service anymore, but we can have the customers right there on, a, a, on the other side while we're just filling out paperwork with them, or I can walk right around and fill out the paperwork with them alongside here while still having a two-place desk in the back and a waiting room and a nice sitting area. And then you walk into a giant wide open garage. Let's open up the garage and turn the lights on so we can actually see what it looks like. Now this unit looks really, really dirty right now because these people have been here a long time and let's face it, it's a garage and garages get dirty. But when they moved in here, this entire concrete floor was acid etched, it was stone grinded and this is an industrial coating on the floors. The walls were all wrapped with white wrap. The walls were painted here, the office was redone. When this is clean, it's beautiful. I mean, it looks like a showroom. People can come here and it looks like a showroom. It looks so professional versus my hundred year old like grease garage. And right here, I can imagine a nice rotary. So if I clean this up and put some white sheets with my logo in the background, I could put a rotary right here where I could pull cars onto it all year long. Now remember, we live in New Hampshire, so we have like five months of snow all year and we get a lot of rain too. So if I put a carousel right here, I could just pull the car onto it, turn it, and photograph it with a nice clean background that's well lit so my cars would always look presentable because the photos sell the car. The photos sell the car to get the people to my shop. So that is a great selling feature. Then I have the two big wide open overhead doors and I have space out here and it's basically quiet. You can see there's no drive-by traffic, which is a good thing and a bad thing. I mean, no drive-by traffic is bad because people aren't stopping in to spend money, but then again, people aren't stopping to come in and just chit chat either. So we would actually be a lot more productive. Now you can see all the parking here would be all mine, all the way down. Now this isn't what I would call a retail location because again, nobody's gonna come here unless it's by appointment, but that's the good thing. Everybody that shows up usually shows up by appointment anyway. Most people are looking on the internet first and then they come out with an appointment. So usually they look at the ad, they look at the photos, then they reach out to me, I send them a video. So now they've seen photos, they've seen the ad, they've gone to the website. Then they've reached out to me, then they get a video 
and then they show up and typically they're usually ready to purchase or they've already been pre-approved through financing on our website. So it's all really easy. So not much is done on retail lots anymore. A lot can be done before you even show up. And then when you get here, you take it for the test drive and then we do the close. Now you can see how much space there is for storage. There's my Denali over there. There's my RV over there. The parking's just a little bit smaller than my shop down the road. Now everything I've explained about this unit sounds great, it sounds amazing. So let's go over to my shop in Hampstead and I'll show you the comparisons because this one actually does have a lot of downfalls as well. Now I'm taking my RV out for the first time this year so I can get it to my shop, get it cleaned up and get it serviced and inspected, that way we can start using it this summer. It's a perfect example of it being here and useful. You can see it was parked out of the way, it didn't even matter that it was here because you barely even noticed because there's so much space. This is an industrial complex, so big trucks are meant to fit in everywhere. Now at my shop, you'll see we have a long, long driveway. And it's not that appealing to the eye. So when customers come out here, it's not like your first impression really isn't that great. The other thing is you can see how long this driveway is to the building in the back. So when customers would call when this was my original place, I would tell them the address and they still wouldn't be able to find it. Now there's a sign right there. And even though it says number three, people still could not find it. They go to this building, they go to that building, they go to that building. They go to every building but mine and I'd have to walk down to the end of the road to get them up to me. That is a problem. When people are here to buy cars and they can't find the location that's already starting off on your first bad note, then the First impression's really not that great either. Here's the third problem. Look what's over there, Jeeps and trucks. That's what I sell, Jeeps and trucks. The guy in front of me, which is on the main road, sells Jeeps and trucks. And a kicker, his name is also Craig. So if I am spending five grand a month on marketing to get people to come out and look at my Jeeps and trucks, the first thing they're gonna do is go to that place because they're gonna think it's me, and then they're gonna go in and ask for Craig because they're looking for Craig. So they're gonna to talk to Craig about a Jeep Wrangler and it's not gonna be me. So all of my advertising and marketing expenses are gonna to go to him first and I have to hope, which he's a good guy, I'm sure he would, I have to hope that he's gonna send them my way and then even after that, after they look at my Jeep, they're still gonna say, well, there was a Jeep down there, let's go look at that one too. Which stops them from buying my car right off the bat. Instead of that first time, I'm gonna impulse buy and let's go. They know they have options right in front of them, which is a 10 second drive. Why not go look at those first? So here is my shop now. You'll see I have cars here and I have cars here. And we're actually really, really light because it's difficult to find used cars to sell right now. The market's crazy and there is like a shortage on used cars. But typically I could fit 30 plus cars and even double them up like right around here. But what you'll see is like my boat is taking up the entire parking lot. Forget about putting my RV here. Over at the other shop, I'd be able to put my RV, my boat, not take up any extra space. Here, it's tight quarters. Now there is more actual parking spaces, but it is tight. And this building's over 100 years old. And if you pay attention to this video, you'll see how much traffic actually goes by me. And it's the middle of the day when people are at work and we still get a lot of traffic. So the stop in traffic's pretty good. Like this Raptor, for example, when I bought it, I put it right out there. The next day, somebody stopped in to look at it. Did they buy it? No, they kind of just wanted to chat about it. So you get the 50-50, like you get a lot of tire kickers that just want to say, hey, cool car. For example, when I put my Audi R8 out there, I must have had a dozen kids stop in to just ask about it and look at it. And then people want to test drive it because they think it's just a cool car, which they're not allowed to do. I still have this Raptor. So yeah, it's cool that I put it out there and everybody knows that I have a Raptor but I still have it. The other thing is you'll see like the Jeeps. We sold six Jeeps in the past week or so, and we're now a Jeep dealer, kind of. So everybody in town, they know if they want a Jeep or everybody that drives by, if they know they want a Jeep, they go, oh, I saw a dealership that has a bunch of Jeeps, you should go there. So there's the alternative. Like if I'm in an industrial park with no traffic, people don't think of me as the Jeep guy. Now here's my shop. Let me go over the boat. Office, double bay, double bay with a lift, double bay with a lift. So we can put three cars here, one, two, up in the air during a snowstorm. We can also put three cars here with one up in the air during a snowstorm. Then going into this bay, we have one, two, storage, bathroom. I just emptied my boat, so that's what all this stuff is right here. So you'll see we have three, six, seven, eight cars inside the garage, plus a bathroom, plus storage, plus room for tools. Obviously the other garage is way nicer. 
we have uneven floors, uneven lifts because of the uneven floors. There's just a lot of stuff in not a lot of space in the garage. So that garage is far nicer than this one. If people actually come in here, it's kind of gross. The other one, it's a beautiful showroom if we wanted it to be. So I would say we get about one drive-by sale a month. Is that fair? Okay, so we get one drive-by sale a month. Let's say we make $2,000 in that car. That's $2,000 a month extra in sales that we get here from being here. Most of the stuff is done online nowadays. You know, we have all the third-party vendors that sell our cars for us and then customers make appointments to show up. So we're not gonna lose that business. Over in Hampstead, they're still gonna go there. All right, so we have 30, what was it, 33 cars? 33 cars plus the traffic, plus the customer, uh, the employee parking over there. All right, so we have a lot of parking. But it's still, I'm proud of this place, but it's still not like ideal for me. So let's go over to Hampstead. We'll talk about that location, Versus. compare the two, and then I want to hear everyone's opinion. I Fair? actually think that the Hampstead location might be a little bit better, only because of size, cleanliness. I feel like the flow of the outside is a little bit easier to drive in and out of. You've got the space to be able to maneuver around. We do most of our sales as far as retail goes through online. So all of them tend to put it through the email. So we're able to contact the customers and have them come in. We can control when they come in for their appointment. The shop in Hampstead is much better level and needed. Uh, but again, it, the, the traffic flow. The point that I have, because I've sold, I've shown cars in both locations. So you give the uh, Owens Court address to a customer, and they could be right at the corner. I was like, I, I, I don't, I don't see you yet, and that is a big downfall. And everything that we advertise, you get something. He'll yeah. get it, yeah. yeah and I won't get his advertisements, but right. he'll get all 100 percent of mine. Dollars. Let's raise our hands for this is a joint decision because we're, we're all involved. Raise our hands for Danville. Did you raise your hand for Danville? I'm, I'm so mixed. I am too. I'm because, like my grandfather. Because of the shop. You raised your hand for Danville, right? No, I didn't. All right. So here's my shop. And this is where I originally started. Now you'll see all of this is just brush and land. Long term, I want to level this out. And it could be like our long term home. Like I put up a new building right here exactly how I want it. And it'd be kind of neat. So it would be an easy transition going from there to all this open land. Now you'll see the long driveway. We have these logging trucks here. We have just vehicles and snow plows, all kinds of stuff. It's not really the best first impression. I'm so tossed because on one hand, the inside is beautiful. And the other, no one's really going to bother me. It's going to be shown by appointment only. But I mean, I get that drive by traffic at the other shop and it really works for me. And even one sale a month is a lot of extra money in my pocket. But this one is one minute from my house so I can meet people after hours or on Sundays and it's no big deal versus driving to my other shop is kind of a pain in the butt. Also, I'm already plowing this place in the winter. I won't have to plow the other shop in Hampstead. That's more of a retail lot and this is more of like a step backwards. I don't really know. That's why I made this video so you guys can give me your opinions. Let me know down below. I'll read them all and try to interact with you guys. Appreciate it. Also, you can follow me on Instagram and TikTok and Facebook with links down below to get like our day-to-day -day stuff and get insights and, and even access to videos and other projects that are going on before they come out on YouTube. See you all a little later. Thanks for watching. Adios.